guys, this is Jeff Sparks from Between Paint, and let me ask you a question. Has a painting ever captured your attention from way across the room? And it's so far away that you may not even know what the subject is about, but it's capturing your attention and it's drawing you toward it. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that today because as artists, wouldn't that be great if that happened to our painting? that if it hung on a wall it would draw a patron to it or a judge in a jury show so what is that element what's going on in a painting when it is drawing you into it and toward it so on the screen here you see a picture a painting that um, one of my favorites it's by none other than John Singer Sargent one of my heroes in fine art and this painting is titled The Children of Edward Darley Boyd. If you're ever in Boston and you're at the Museum of Fine Arts, you can even see it there along with those two Chinese vases. It's beautiful. But we begin by asking this question, why do some paintings do this? Why do some paintings capture our attention while others, frankly, are invisible to us? So I think the reason, after years of looking at paintings, that I've come up with that explains this phenomenon is called captivating design. Now, I'm not talking about design, but captivating design, and I believe there's a difference. Whereas design is huge and ambiguous, and every you know profession out there talks about design, um, as artists, we're going to talk about captivating design. And so I've built a series that we're going to talk about all these elements that I think feed into captivating design and how we can apply that in our own work to good effect. So one of the elements of captivating design is called visual eye movement. And it's something that I've encountered, that you've encountered, whether overtly or subconsciously, we are seeing this happen in paintings that really capture us. So on the screen here, let's start by looking at a master of captivating design, none other than the artist John Singer Sargent. The painting you're looking at on the screen is titled The Children of Edward Darley Boyd. It is not only one of uh, Sargent's most famous paintings, but also one of the most instructive paintings uh, for visual eye movement. And so we're going to go ahead and jump right in, but first let me say, um, the way I look at it, there are about four different things that make visual eye movement work in a painting. And we're going to cover those four briefly here. And like so many other things in fine art, it'll be simple to talk about, um, probably a little more difficult to put into our own work, but we got to start somewhere. And if our paintings don't have these elements in it, the moment we start paying attention to that, our paintings are going to start taking off. So let's begin with uh, turning this painting into uh, grayscale. When we turn a painting into grayscale and uh, unsaturate all colors, what we're really doing is we're looking at values. And when you design a painting, you're designing almost always with shape and value. So it's easier to evaluate these things looking at it uh, in a grayscale format. And it's still beautiful, is it not? Uh, the color adds to it, but it still reads beautifully uh, in grayscale. And one of the things that we want to point out, one of the first things that I'll do a little drawing on here, we're going to deconstruct this painting. And the first element the, of wonderful design like this that I'm going to call visual eye movement is uh, when Sargent allows your eyes to get into a painting and how he does that is really pretty remarkable. If you look at the bottom of a painting here almost every painting that pulls you in has this uh, major line or some entryway into the painting and right here we have the carpet. So Sargent's going to build three major lines uh, in this painting that lead our eyesight into and out of the painting, if you will. And every painting needs that. But we design this, whether we do it uh, on paper or through thumbnails or just on the fly, we do this intentionally as artists all the time. And Sargent masterfully does it here. I believe, and I'll just start off by saying that I think his subject is this girl right here. Um, I believe uh, the design itself will uh, prove that, but if you look at his entry and exit lines, these major visual lines that this painting has, they really are forming an arrow. If you use your imagination, you can see it, and that arrow is pointing to this little girl. Um, but those are found in every major painting. 
You know what, another thing, though, that Sargent has here, and it's uh, present in other paintings that uh, we see that have great capture ability, it captures your eyes, are indirect lines. So if we have, let's say, these major movement lines that Sargent's put in here, um, by looking at them with a different color, we have these indirect lines. These are what I call redirect lines. They're lines within a painting, and I'm going to point out the ones I've located on Sargent's work here, that keep your eyes moving within the subject matter or pointing you back into the subject matter once your eyes have already entered. So let's be clear, there are those visual elements, these edges or these lines that pull our eyes from the frame into the painting itself. But once there, we want to have it stay there. We want people's eyes not to have to leave. And so by uh, looking at redirect lines, what's happening is if your eyes are hitting these abstract shapes, there's a visual bounce, as you can see me drawing that arrow there, that uh, makes that line right there really push, really put you back into the subject matter. And I think all the paintings that are really strong have that. Uh, you know, the third element they have, I believe, are uh, attention to corners. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't hear a lot about corners in school. Uh, I didn't hear a lot about it in my own training, and I had to, had to learn along the way that you've got to pay attention to corners. And but sometimes paying attention to them means doing nothing with them or strategically leaving them without interest. And here you can see that's exactly what Sargent's doing. And even though over here there's a rug that I'm covering up, that rug has no visual interest. There's no subject that is somehow interesting in that area. The reason why we pay attention to corners is because they're kind of like a hole in a balloon where the air leaks out. Well, in a painting, corners are visual leaks, and so you have to have some way to block that visual leak. And I, I would even point out, uh, maybe anticipate your question, why does it do that? Why do paintings leak at corners? Well, the answer is pretty simple. A corner is really an arrow, isn't it? If you look here, all of these corners seem to pull like gravity, so you want something like anti-gravity or anti-gravity to push your eyes back in and the way you do that is having good strong subject area focal point focal area that uh, makes and renders these blank corners uh, not necessary or you know they're there but they're not doing anything so that will have the effect of using the subject as gravity that pulls you right back in to where the subject masses are so pay attention to your corners as well and you know what, I think there is even a fourth element. Now this isn't found in all paintings by all, you know, to any stretch of the imagination, but many of them have something I call triangulation. When you have people or figures inside a painting, your eyes are drawn to their eyes. And so let's see what's going on here. Sargent has um, the ability here to put uh, just the right way, a triangulation of faces. And that really is the subject. Don't you agree? If you look at this painting, aren't the girls the subject? And how he has them arranged in a triangular format uh, isn't by accident. Um, I bet, and I'm pretty sure I'm accurate on this too, that every single element of this painting is staged. There may be other details he left out, but these girls are dressed to be in a painting. Um, so they're already staged in costume, and then they're sat down. And I imagine the doll is placed perfectly there, and the girl's told to hold it. Um, every abstract element, these were probably rearranged, these Chinese pots. Everything about this painting is arranged not for the subject, but for the captivating design. So that's what we're really talking about here. We have all of these different areas we've talked about, these four major areas, the major lines, and we have the redirect lines, the corner at the, and the attention we pay to the corner, and the triangulation of subject matter within it. I think even though we're talking about them relatively quickly and they seem very simple, I mean, we're both artists, we know that that's not as easy to invent ourselves, but 
you can become aware of it and you can begin to use these elements in your painting that, and, and they will really help your painting pull people in. There's no question, if you're a fan of Sargent, he is a master of brushwork. He's a master of color. Anything related to fine art, he masters. Um, but from a distance, all of that stuff kind of goes away. It kind of fades. So from a distance, his painting really works to pull you in. And by using these compositional elements, I believe that's exactly how he's doing it. A couple um, other comments here. If you look at this painting, turn that on real quick. Um, this is how it looks at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. It's gigantic, of course, and life-size. But here are those Chinese vases. And a couple notes about that. Look over here at the Chinese vase itself. You see that? There is absolutely no, sorry about that, no detail um, present there like there is here. And why would there be? It would really detract. So what Sargent is doing um, is making a painting that he knows will read from a very far distance, and it pulls us in. Even from this distance, this photograph was taken. Uh, we know it's Sargent, and obviously it has a highlighted position in this gallery, but even if we didn't know that was him, something about this painting really works to pull us in and keep our attention there. Now, we're not John Singer Sargent, but we can be a lot better at our paintings, and put those paintings on walls and really draw people to it by paying attention to those four areas of visual eye movement um, that is uh, capturing our eyesight. And those four are, again, major lines that come from the edge of the canvas in, the redirect lines, which are lines that move your eyes around and guide them inside the canvas, and the corner, uh, paying attention to corners so we don't uh, not pay attention to them and end up doing something that causes our visual uh, gravity to leak out of them. And then also triangulation, some element you'll see in uh, so many paintings that really pull you in. So, hey, there it is. Um, look at this painting for a while if you want. See if it can help you with your own ideas and maybe help you breathe new life into your work. It certainly has helped me. And if you feel this video, by the way, has been helpful, hey, let me know about it and share a comment or two if you'd like to do that. And then share it. This is certainly a word of mouth thing and I'd like to put out a lot more of these videos where we're learning about design and fine art. So again, hey, this is Jeff at Between Paint. I look forward to uh, talking to you again.